Today on Reese Dixon, we are making this fascinating flower headband. Hi everybody, it's Teresa with ReeseDixon.com. Today I am revisiting one of my most popular tutorials ever of these singed organza flowers. And today we are going to be making a headband out of them just in time for Mother's Day or just spring or just because you like headbands <laughs> and it's so easy but I've got a twist up my sleeve this time to make it extra special. So the first thing I've got here is some organza. That's this super sheer fabric. It needs to be made out of some kind of a synthetic polyester or a nylon, something like that. And what I've done is, well I chose like a creamy color because that's going to be what works great for my little twist. But I cut, how many of these do I have? Maybe six? Yeah, six of these. And look at, I hope you can see on camera, um, that blobby shape. Like, can you see that it's basically just like a deformed gingerbread man? Like, th the messier you get, the better this will work, actually. And the prettier your singed flower will be in the end. So you just basically need to make a five point shape. Like you can make, you know, draw as little star and cut hoops around the star if you need to. But um, like there's like a notch I cut out and there's a point. I mean, it's so messy that you don't need to put a lot of stress into this. So then here I've got my candle going. So if you are not fully grown, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got a grown up with you because this can get away from you in a hurry. And you're going to also want to make sure that you're doing it in a ventilated space because I, I haven't experienced myself, but I've heard from other people that this can produce a really gross smell and fumes. So just something to be considered, you know, while you're preparing. Um, so all you have to do is hold your little blob <laughs> that you've cut out above the flame. And once, oops, see how it's already starting to curl? You just, you don't want it to touch the flame. You do not, this will catch on fire and you do not want that. All you wanna do is let it get close enough to the heat that it starts to curl. There we go, see that? See how it's starting? So you just kind of twist that around and let that shrivel up. There you go. And you can come back and give some you know, other spots more attention if you need to. But you can start to see our flower taking shape here. So I'm just gonna do that all the way around for all of my pieces, all six of my pieces. And you want some of your pieces to be more shriveled than others. This really works best when you, they're, they're not all the same size and shape. We're gonna layer them. So with some of them, I'm going to let it get a little bit closer. See, that one's really getting shriveled up. There we go. And uh, then others, some I'm going to want to lay a little bit more flat. But I've found, after doing a million of these, that the more shriveled they get, the better they look, especially closer to the inside. So you're going to want to do some that, when you just look at them, look a almost like they're ruined. Almost like they are too shriveled to use. Um, but they will look so good once it's in the piece. So. But see, if you've got a big candle like this, even here it can get pretty hot. So you're gonna wanna be careful with your fingers and uh, you know, not try to do this all in one fell swoop. There we go. Okay, see even this, I can get a lot more crinkle going. So I'm gonna be at this for just a minute, getting all of my pieces melted so that we can layer them together. Here's my flowers, all crinkled up and melted. And you can see like this one is shriveled up pretty good and this one is still pretty open. So I'm going to stack them kind of based on that openness and I'm going to turn the petals so that they're not all just shaped the same and you know just laid right on top of each other. I'm going to kind of arrange them so that I get the full benefit of all of that crunchiness. And here's one, 
and there's the last one. So I'm gonna take a minute to just kind of tuck these up inside each other. I want them to really curl up like the petals of a flower and so and look like they've all kind of opened up on each other. And then once I get that just the way I want it, looks good, I've got a beading needle with some thread on it. I'm gonna come up from the bottom into that center through all of those petals. And here I'm going to start sewing on some stamens and other, you know, all those little bits inside the center of a flower. And I'm gonna do that with little seed beads. So here's some pretty purple ones. And you can do this by just sewing on one little bead at a time. You can even glue them on, but then you have to, you know, get your layers stuck together somehow. So this just kind of accomplishes both of those tasks in one. Um, I like to vary it by having some loops of beads in the center and then have a few just kind of scattered around the edges. So I'll start with, say, 12 of these. I push those down to the bottom of the flower and then just close to where I came up I push my needle down again and all of those beads will pull tight and create a little loop like that see so then I'm just gonna come right back up on top and so do that all over again I'm gonna sew maybe five of these little loops just because nature likes an odd number, so it tends to look best if you do them in like three, five, you know, something like that. So I think I'll do five little loops and then some little beads scattered around the center and it'll make it look so elegant, but of course, be holding all of your messy layers together at the same time. So that's gonna take me just a little minute and, uh, and then we're ready for our, our real decoration trick. Here's all of my beads making up those little stamens and speckles on the inside of a flower. And this is typically where I've stopped in the past, but not anymore. Here comes my big brainstorm. So my friends at RIT Dye, the dye people, they uh, sent me this new product that they're working on called Color Perfect. And what it is, is it's pre-mixed dye that you can just spray directly on your surface. You can pour it on, you can paint it on, you don't have to go through the complicated, um, you know, dyeing process. And so I've got a little spray bottle here that you just, oop, there we go, attach it right onto the bottle of dye and working on a surface that can easily be cleaned. This desk is indestructible, but otherwise you'd want to make sure that you had, you know, plastic down. I'm just going to start spraying this, there we go, directly on the flower. to give it that little beautiful speckled look. Look at how beautiful. And then not only does it give it that variety, but as if I just stick to the outer petals, it gives it that kind of variegated color that is really true to flowers, how it's got like a bright color on the tips and then fades as it goes to the bottom. So you could, uh, they've got these little dauber thingies. Ooh, here, this is a dauber. You could just brush it right on or They've got little nozzles that you can pour on if you actually want to create those little stripes that you can sometimes see on flowers. But I'm happy with just how this little speckled spray has turned out. So I'm going to leave this to dry and clean up my desk. But look, I don't even have to wash my hands. How awesome is that? So I've got to clean up my desk. But in the meantime, we are going to decorate the headband. We are going to uh, make this little flower into a headband. And so I'm not just going to leave it white, I'm going to decorate it. This is some taffeta that I got uh, and then dyed pearl gray. That's Ritz's latest color and it, oh, it was so gorgeous to work with. It's just this beautiful kind of lavender gray. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just snip, oh, I didn't cut all the way through the selvage. I'm gonna snip into my taffeta here and then just rip it, rip it. And I'll use my scissors to cut off any extra 
frayed. Hang it on, I'm gonna cut off that little salvage piece there. So this is a big mess that can come off. Okay, so I'm left with this gorgeous strip of taffeta. And I've got just a plain old white glue. I'm gonna use this down at the bottom here. Okay, and I'll, so I'll tack my taffeta piece there on the bottom, and then I'm just gonna start wrapping it around. You can add a little bit of glue as you go if you want to just make sure that it's super secure and will not go anywhere. But I'm just gonna cover this whole thing with that taffeta piece. And what I really love is how on the edge where I dyed it, it's a slightly different color gray. So I wanna kinda keep that, I'm gonna twist it right here so that I can keep that darker color showing on the bottom as I wrap it. Once I finished wrapping, I just glued the ends down again. And so now my headband is ready to apply my little flower. So I'm gonna use a bit more glue here. I'm just gonna take the cap off and get right down to work. I'm gonna spread a bunch of glue right on the back of my flower and stick it on my headband, let's see. But for a kid, I'd put it close to the top, but for a grown lady, I'll put it like right there. And then with a bit more glue, I've got this circle of gray felt that I cut large enough so that it could cover all of my stitches. And I'm gonna get some more glue here. I don't want this to go anywhere, so whoo! <laughs> so I'm not being shy with my glue. But that's a bit much even for me. Ooh, making a mess. Okay, glue applied. So flower on one side, this circle on the other. And I'm just gonna hold that for a minute until it dries. Now you could use a uh, hot glue if you want, but I find that the liquid glue has just a better staying power. The hot glue, what you, what you get in speed, you sometimes lose in um, you know, uh, endurance. And so sometimes the hot glue can just kind of pop off the surface, but this liquid glue, once it's dry, it won't go anywhere. So my glue and my dye are both dry and my headband is finished. And I think it is so cute, so cute. Uh, you can always make your flowers smaller if you don't want something that's so much of a fascinator style. Um, that's the great thing about these flowers. It's completely customizable, completely up to you. I am loving the dye effect and how it gives it this just very gentle feathered kind of gradated look. I think it's so elegant. And I'm, I love the this gray, purpley, pearl dye color that makes it go with everything. So I hope that this was inspiring to you to dress it up a little and give it a try. And please be sure and subscribe to my channel for all of my big crafty ideas. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.